Welcome back to the channel, Classic Volkswagen Lovers uh, Jr. with the Classic VW Books. So it's been quite some time since the uh, last time you heard something about Sunny. Um, there's a few things that I want to do with uh, Sunny. I want to upgrade the uh, seat belt, so I have plans to purchase uh, a new set of uh, retractable front uh, uh, seat belts for the car. So that's up in my, uh, my to-do list. Uh, I also purchased a MP uh, exhaust uh, header that I'm going to install uh, in Sunny to improve its uh, performance. It was running well when I you know, last uh, drove it. So uh, it's been sitting in storage since uh, October, which really we haven't actually run it uh, since we parked it in here and stored it for the winter. As you can see, I'm wearing a coat. It's uh, April. And it's cold today so we've had some warm days and some cold days and today is one of those days that it's really cold for us to work outside um, so I thought maybe I should just give it a start and see if it runs um, we'll just go ahead and get started by removing this cover so I'll go ahead and remove the cover so another update so recently you have not seen me upload uh, many videos uh, for uh, Frankie's uh, restoration uh, it's sitting in the back and as time permits I go and work on it a little bit at a time uh, so it might just turn out to be a long-term project who knows but uh, at the same time I think that right now as we speak I do have maybe one too many projects going. I have a honey to-do list that I gotta work on here in the house. And I need to get that done first before I keep working in any of my other projects. You all know the old saying, you know, happy wife, happy life. Or maybe more time to play with my bucks, right? <laughs> uh, Let's hope she doesn't see this video because she'll be upset at me. No, I'm just kidding. But it's true, you know, I, I do have, a, I think right, right now, one, one too many projects uh, going and I need to somehow get organized for that. So that's pretty neat, you know? Uh, I don't know if you recall the video I, I did on this, uh, um, uh, car cover I actually got this one at Aldi for 20 bucks and at the time I was really entertaining to buy one from Jbox for a hundred and nine dollars so watch the video if you're really interested in getting one of these because I don't know if they still have them but if you see one just don't lose the chance to go get one of these so so I'm gonna access the car from this side here oh I also forgot to mention it's the uh, ladybugs uh, floor mats my wife got me those for, I think it was for Father's Day or Christmas. I can't recall right now. Uh, but uh, it's uh, one of those things that uh, makes your car uh, looks nicer, right? So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get this car started. Uh, let's go ahead and focus on the engine. And let's give it a try.
it doesn't want to run so it doesn't want to start uh, I think I may have flooded it um, I'll just give it a, a minute there and see if um, it dries a little bit and it might just start so all right so um, I got that uh, carburetor um, aftermarket cover on that to assure that nothing would go in there uh, the original oil bath um, the hose that connects in the bottom like this um, the little nipple just broke loose of the uh, the spot wells and um, so I could have welded it back but then I tried something different I went and got some uh, JB well super glue super well for steel and I'm giving that a try to see if that works um, if it doesn't work then I'll just go ahead and spot weld it with my uh, my flux core welder so but I'll give it a try I was hoping it would start right up let's see no lock something here so uh, let me show you what happened here I think that's the problem because otherwise it would just have started uh, so let's go ahead and um, take this camera off of here show you exactly what I think the problem is I already see it here in the bottom I actually see the spring here so, you see that spring right there? I'm glad I caught it because um, I think the problem is that this little lever right here, you can see that lever right there, that one right here, it connects to right here to this little um, piece right here. And it actually gets uh, connected to that with a C-clip, if I'm not mistaken. This is not the first time that this happens to me. So I'm gonna have to take this carp off from here to fix that or better yet, uh, restore, refurbish one Solex original carburetor that I have and try that. So that's another task or another project added to my to-do list. All right, so I guess we won't be able to start the car today. Um, Oh well, and it's a project for later on, I guess. Not sure why that happens, but it does happen. So I have to remove this from here and find out um, where is the, uh, might need some light here to show you, but I think that's pretty much the problem. I think that's why it won't start. So that's a project for another day. So it's been a couple of days since I tried to start Sunny and it didn't start because the rod that connects to the uh, uh, car pump here in the back disconnected, somehow uh, came loose. And I did find the spring here, uh, 
inside somewhere down there uh, it looks like the sea cliffs that holds that in place actually broke this is the second time that that happens to me that pump has a little arm mechanism that somehow I think it's too close to the uh, alternator so um, my thought process to see if I could fix it was to raise the carp a little bit so I went online and I bought this uh, carp spacer from MP for uh, 34 pick uh, carbs. So what I'm going to try to do is install that here to see if I can lift the carp a little bit and see if that might resolve the problem. I'm not sure that that will resolve the problem, but we'll give it a try. Uh, also, at least I know that it should separate that piece away from the alternator so I'm gonna get a couple of wrenches and uh, break this carp loose uh, so I'll need a probably a, a flat screwdriver to get this hose out and um, the one in the back uh, I'm gonna take this out um, I'll probably just remove the uh, carp from the uh, distributor so that it would be easier for me to actually get my hands in there so let's see what we can do uh, I think that I might need to purchase some of these uh, studs. Uh, hopefully I can get them locally here at the uh, auto parts uh, that are close by me. Um, but I think that that's one of the things that I might have to do. So I may have to get longer ones to uh, actually install the spacer. Or if I get lucky, it might just fit. So let's see what happens. Okay, so let me grab a couple of wrenches. Okay, so if you look in here, you can see that this uh, right here is really close to the strap that fastens the alternator. And I'm thinking that that's probably causing the issue. Uh, so, like I said, my thought process is to put a spacer here and lift this up. Uh, but also, this here, if you can see that, that's the rod that I was telling you that actually twice now has uh, come loose uh, from the carburetor. And the first time that that happened, it actually did exactly what it did this uh, time around when I tried to start the car. So. I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart and see if I can put this stand back in a position where you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so let's see if that's gonna be close enough or not. Okay, so uh, let's take um, let's take this wire out here. Okay, let's break this hose loose right here. And right here
Nope. That's loose right there now. I don't want to boost this here, so hopefully. Let's just put this right here. And um, so we got that broken loose. We got that out. Uh, we should be able to disconnect this right here. Um, disconnect this here, like so. And there should be no other wire in the way right now. So now we need to get this guy out. And it right here in the back. We have to get another type of wrench. So I'm going to use this little curvy wrench right here to see if we can get that bolt in the back. Uh, sorry for my head being in the way, but. try to get it out and hope that I don't drop it. So let me show you exactly what's happening. If you see this here now, you can see this rod actually goes through here to this little uh, loop right here. And there's a spring that goes right here. So I'll have to find the way to put this back in place and see if that's gonna resolve the issue. Okay, so the way that this works is the spring goes in there and then that flat washer goes here and then a little C-clip or a little pin goes on that little hole right there. Uh, the last time this happened to me, uh, the issue I had was that I couldn't find a C-clip that day. So what I did, I believed, I used a piece of um, wire and it broke. It broke. Okay, so here is my uh, reference uh, book. <clears throat> this is an old version I have from um, uh, Climbers Publications. And uh, <clears throat> just to make a, a correction, I said it was actually being 
held by a C-clip. It's not a C-clip, it's actually a small cutter pin. And apparently I am missing one of the small washers, so I have to see if I can find it or see if I can find a replacement one. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this part here. And once I have assembled it, I'll show you what it's, what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so I was able to fix the little rod that uh, fell off, uh, got disconnected, and um, I reconnected it back. I found a cutter pin and I installed it. This is the uh, spacer. Uh, just like I said, I don't think that I have enough uh, studs sticking out to install the nuts. I barely have a couple of threads to put the nuts, but uh, here now we have clearance we have uh, clearance here uh, this is not interfering anymore it's not hitting the alternator so uh, the next thing to test will be to uh, know and find out if I have the clearance on top when I installed the oil bath for now, I'm just gonna give it a try. I'm gonna go ahead and run to the local um, auto parts store and see if I can find uh, these here uh, a little bit longer. Maybe about, uh, I would say, three eighths of an inch longer, maybe. Something like that. And see if that would work. Um, but uh, meanwhile, since I have a few treads right there, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and install the, uh, the nuts, although I will have to take it out again. But I'm just curious to see what happens, um, if that's gonna work or not, or if that was the reason why the car was not starting because the, the pump was not actually um, activating. So let's see. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these nuts on. on. I'm not gonna film that. It looks like my uh, memory car on my GoPro, it's uh, full, so I wanna still have space in it when I try to start it. Okay, so I couldn't find the uh, carburetor studs in our local uh, auto parts stores. Um, I did find a possible solution I may contemplate here in a few days, which is I have a couple of um, M8 uh, 1.25 bolts that are machine bolt, so I may be able to retread the size of the bolt that is not treaded, and I may be able to do the stud that I need for the carburetor. Meanwhile, I was able to install it with the actual studs that the carburetor has but I'm really shy away, maybe a tread away from having a full tread come out. And in terms of a mechanical application, that's not ideal. But for the time being, I just want to test to see if the spacer um, is going to help out, which I already checked that out and I got the clearance that I needed uh, right here. And I'll give you a closer look. So let's make this. So if you see right now here, I do have now more clearance between the pump and the alternator. So let's give it a try. I am still refurbishing a Solex. I just pulled out all the parts that I needed. Um, and I have a couple of, uh, I think I got like three. I got two, I think 34, I picked three and a 30. So I'm still refurbishing those anyway, but let's give it a try and see what happens.
a quick solution to that by I'm pretty sure I can actually uh, shred those machine bolts that I have to make this uh, right. Uh, this is a Chinese uh, carburetor. I bought it for test runs on the bench, but at the time that I installed it, I was so excited about all the all of the uh, Volkswagen festivals that were going on. And it was running, or it has been running well, so I left it installed until I can actually uh, refurbish one of my solids. Uh, but again, I'm pretty happy. I'm glad that it started. Like I said, I, I haven't started this car since uh, maybe October last year. So, the win. Uh, if you need a part number for the spacer that I install here, uh, just comment below. I saved the uh, the little cardboard, and uh, I can actually provide that to you as well. As a matter of fact, I'll go get it and I'll actually mention it here in the channel. So I got the part number, it's from MP, and the part number it's called a Carb Spacer 34 pick. Part number is 16 9705 0. Uh, Alright, folks, so uh, that was it for this video here. Um, if this is the first time that you're watching my video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, brother, that's it for right now. Until then, this is Junior with Classic VW Books. Junior out.